me this now. ESCOM is blaming power cuts in Deep Blue on illegal connections. It emerged at a meeting between the utilities management and New Johannesburg Mayor Dr. Tampo Palace. And just yesterday, Deep Blue residents barricaded roads to protest the cuts. Now, for more on this, we're joined by ESCOM Gauteng spokesperson, Ms. Amanda Kriti. Thank you so much for your time, Amanda, and good morning to you. Uh, let's have this conversation. I mean, I'm sure you've seen those protests or heard about them in the media from Sowetans, particularly Deep Blue residents, uh, barricading roads due to those power cuts for those residents who are still confused, who don't understand why that decision was taken by Eskom Gauteng, why were those uh, electricity uh, cut? Uh, good morning to Melo and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the reason why uh, the electricity was disconnected in Deep Slot, uh, uh, Deep Cloth Zone 3 is particularly because um, the residents of that area, uh, they are connecting illegally they are bypassing their meters and they are buying electricity from ghost vendors. So that is the reason why um, their electricity has been disconnected. And um, this was really done uh, because ESCOM conducts um, network audits. And when we were busy with our network audits, our technicians, they discovered that um, they had um, done these illegal connections and bypass their meters. And also in our systems, we could also pick up that they're actually not buying um, electricity. So they, they, uh, when we look in our system, they come up as zero buyers. So they're using electricity, but they're not buying from ESCOM vendors um, mm -hmm. that sell electricity. Yeah. So when we talk about uh, Zone 3 Deep Blue residents, are we talking about everyone, each and every household? Or is there a selected number uh, that you can share with us where you found uh, these customers were actually disconnected or even not paying or perhaps even buying, you know, bogus electricity from different vendors? So in terms of um, yesterday, we issued a media statement. And in there, we have eight transformers in Deep Cloth. And you will see um, the, the, the sales that uh, we make versus the losses that uh, we, might, we are making in this particular area. Yeah. So uh, it's 700 uh, affected households, uh, customers uh, that have been disconnected. And out of those 700 customers, I can say mm -hmm. that 90% um, of those customers are not buying electricity. Mm. Let's talk about those losses that you talk about, uh, Amanda, just from ESCOM's perspective. How much in revenue are you losing uh, just from deep revenue? So uh, for this financial year, which started in April uh, till um, end of November, about 96 million rands is, um, is how much we are losing in revenue. Yeah, and, and I'm sure that even with the electricity uh, cuts and disconnection, you still have a process of going back and repairing, you know, a, a sort of infrastructure that has been vandalized. There's a process where you need to still reconnect. Uh, that's, that's still the process that still needs to be undertaken, but it's still, again, money that's been spent. It's still money that needs to be spent because you'll find that um, when we've done the disconnections uh, during our inspections, uh, you'll find that most of the equipment is either damaged and when it's been bypassed, we have to repair that equipment before we can restore supply. Mm. So it, it is a lot of money that is spent uh, trying to um, fix the, the infrastructure that has been damaged. Right. All right. So let's talk about the meeting that happened uh, quite recently, yesterday, to be more specific, between uh, ESCOM and uh, the Johannesburg Mayor, Dr. Mpo Palazzi. What came out from that engagement? So it was our first meeting with her, a meet and greet. So we're just giving an overview of the um, ESCOM profile in terms of um, her areas, uh, which is the city of Johannesburg, and also just sharing with her the challenges that we are currently experiencing, especially with theft and vandalism of our infrastructure. And also um, just sharing with her that there is um, the free basic electricity that is available uh, to assist um, the, the customers that say that they cannot afford electricity. And um, so she was uh, also, she committed to say that um, she's obviously uh, wanting to provide um, basic um, needs uh, to uh, the residents of Johannesburg. However, it's important that we change the culture of people not wanting to pay. Um, we need to realize that the services that we use, we need to pay for them. So she's very much committed in providing um, services. However, we need to uh, change the culture of people not wanting to pay for the services. 
Right, because I can imagine that relationship that you are uh, forming with the mayor cannot be in isolation uh, of you know, the residents without the community members. You need them as part of your stakeholders to come to party so you can have a sustainable solution. With that being said, um, Amanda, I know you also further encourage you know, indigent customers to register for free basic electricity and to make use of this program. Yes, um, we do, because uh, free basic electricity is something that is available for those households that say that they cannot afford. They can use it, um, for instance, um, for the basic um, uses in the house, boiling water, for the lights, um, and um, just uh, using um, the TV if they have. So it's, it's made available just specifically for those basic needs um, to use um, for the households. So we do encourage um, households to please apply via their municipalities. Uh, it's available uh, for indigenous um, individuals. Right. I, I know you speak on behalf of ESCOM Rauteng, but if I may just ask, Amanda, is it available nationally? And what, what's the criteria to actually qualify for this uh, free basic elect electricity? It is available uh, nationally, and um, the criteria is, uh, is that they could uh, touch base with um, the different municipalities that uh, provide uh, electricity to them and uh, submit the application, and then they will be assisted uh, via the municipalities. We just provide the tokens uh, after they've been approved by the municipalities. But I know that municipalities also identify the individuals, and they do approach them uh, when they know that they meet the criteria. So um, they, they, may, they must please contact um, the individual municipalities uh, for assistance. All right, we'll leave it there. Amanda Kulti uh, from the uh, ESCOM uh, routing organization, the spokesperson there. Thank you so much for your time this morning.